Hello, my name is Alexander Marrero with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be talking about Cannonball, the second problem on the January 2024 USCO Bronze Contest. So in this problem, we have Bessie the cow jumping around on a number line. The number line starts with a, a length of N, and S is her initial position on the number line. And she's traveling with a certain power. Her power starts at 1, and you can think of this power variable as sort of her speed. If her power is one, she jumps one number at a time. If her power is five, she jumps five numbers at a time. If her power is a thousand, she would jump a thousand numbers at a time. And she starts traveling to the right. At each location on the number line, we have one of two objects, either a jump pad, which increases her power by some amount V and then reverses her direction, or a target, uh, represented by a one, which breaks if when Bessie lands on it, her power is at least V. And our goal is to determine how many targets break over the course of Bessie's journey. And one important thing to note is Bessie's journey can possibly be infinite, or it could end by her jumping off the number line. So if she jumps off the number line, uh, the process ends, if she gets stuck bouncing back before between two points, uh, she can wind up in an infinite loop. We'll talk about how we're going to deal with this infinite loop in a little bit. Uh, but just for now, note that the journey can end or it can be infinite in length. So here we have a small example, which uh, we start with this five is the number of numbers on our number line. And this three is Bessie's starting location. So here we have a, a jump pad. We know it's a jump pad because the first number is a zero. In the, in the second position, we have a target. It's a target because its number is a one. Target, jump pad, target. And each of these uh, locations have a, has a, uh, a V value, which either if it's a jump pad will increase Bessie's power, or if it's a target is the threshold we need to meet in order to break that target. So if we start at position three, we can see that our power, which is originally one, is greater than the power required to break the target, zero. So this target breaks, and then we continue on jumping one unit to the right because that's our current power level. So when we jump one unit to the right, we get to this jump pad. And we can see that the V value for this jump pad is zero. So our power doesn't increase, but we do reverse direction. So we bounce back to position three. Uh, this target's already broken, doesn't change anything. And then we continue bouncing along. This target, uh, we cannot break because our power level is only one, but it requires a power level of two. And then we reach this jump pad which again, the V here is zero, so our power doesn't increase, uh, but it does reverse our direction. So then we bounce back and we continue bouncing back between these two jump pads. So we'll always bounce between this jump pad and this jump pad leading to this infinite loop. Um, so we only break one target and that's the answer. So for this uh, input, the answer is one, if we started in a different place, the answer could be different. So for example, if we started in position five, uh, we would try to break this target, fail, and then we would bounce off of the number line. So the process would immediately end. All right, sweet. So um, now that we have a sort of an intuition for how this problem is working, let's talk about how we approach problems like this. Whenever you get sort of a convoluted scenario or a complex problem statement where some ridiculous process is going on, that should clue you into the fact that this is almost certainly going to be a simulation problem. So our approach should be, we just try to simulate this process in code and see what happens. Just count the number of targets that break, print out the final answer. One thing to watch out for in this question is that the length of the number line can get quite large, so it can get up to 100,000. So this tells us that uh, we want um, only to make a constant number of passes over this number line. 
So one thing that makes this question challenging is the fact that the process can go on forever. So if we simulate a process going on forever, our code is definitely going to get TLE errors. So for now, let's pretend that the process can't go on forever. So we're, the, we're going to only solve the case where Bessie eventually falls off the number line. And then we'll see how to extend it to the case where she bounces back forever. So this is a common problem solving strategy where we solve an easier problem first and then extend it to the harder problem. So in our code here, we can see that I've already read in the input. Uh, so here we have n, the length of the number line, and s, Bessie's original position. And then we are going to create a data matrix storing each of these values. For, so for each uh, number on the number line, we're going to have one of these pairs. And we're just going to store all of those pairs in an n by 2 integer uh, matrix. So now that we've read in the input, we can begin solving the problem. So in order to solve the problem, we want to keep track of the important variables in the process. So one important variable is going to be the power. And the, uh, another important variable is going to be Bessie's direction. So I'm going to create both a power variable and a direction variable. Direction is going to be 1 if Bessie is going to the right. And it's going to be negative 1 if Bessie is going to the left. The benefit of this choice is in order to calculate Bessie's future position, I can just take direction and multiply it by power uh, to determine how many numbers she's either going to increase or decrease. Uh, we're also going to want to keep track of the number of targets that are breaking. And the easiest way to do this is just create an array uh, with one slot for each potential target. And if a target ever breaks, we update that target's value to be 1. The reason why we want to do this is it prevents double counting. Uh, an alternative idea is you could use a set. So if you know what a set is, uh, this would be a great problem for sets. So we can do broken targets is 0 times n. This is just creating a, a length n integer array initialized to be all zeros. So uh, if we ever break a target, we'll just update this value to be 1. And then at the end of the program, our final answer is just going to be the sum of all of the ones in the broken targets array. Great. Now we're ready to begin our simulation. So like I said earlier, we're going to completely ignore the case where Bessie gets stuck in an infinite loop, solve the easier problem first, and then see how we can extend it to a complete solution. So in this problem, we want to know, is Bessie still on the number line? In order for Bessie to still be on the number line, her position s has to be at least 1 and at most n. So while s is greater than or equal to 1, and s is at most n, we're going to keep simulating. And there are two cases. Case 1, where we encounter a jump pad. Case 2, we encounter a target. If we encounter a jump pad, we know that the first value of the current position in the data matrix is going to be a 0. So if data s minus 1, 0 is equal to 0, we've encountered a jump pad. Otherwise, we've encountered a target. So what's going on here? The idea here is we're subtracting 1 off of s, uh, just because s is 1 indexed, right? s is a number between 1 and n, but arrays go from 0 to n minus 1. So we're subtracting off 1 just so that it uh, plays well with this data matrix. So if it is a jump pad, uh, what do we need to do? We need to increase the power by v and then reverse the direction. So v is going to be just the second element in the current data pair. So that's going to be data s minus 1, 1. Right, so this is the current value of v, right? It's just whatever this second number is for the current number we're on in the number line. So if we're on a jump pad, we're going to take power and we're going to increase it by v, and we're going to reverse the direction. 
reversing the direction is equivalent to just multiplying the direction by negative one, right? So if it's one, if I multiply it by negative one, I get negative one. If it's negative one and I multiply it by negative one, I get one. Great. So that it covers the jump pad case already. And now we need to do the target case. So we want to check, is Bessie's power sufficient to break the target? So is Bessie's power at least V? So if Bessie's power is at least V, then we are going to set broken targets S minus one to be one. So this just flags that the target in position S is going to break. Then we need to update Bessie's position for the future of the simulation. So we're just going to take S and we're going to add to it power. That's the amount of units she's traveling times whatever her direction is. So if she's traveling to the right, S is going to increase. If she's traveling to the left, uh, S is going to decrease. And then at the end of the program, we can just print out the sum of the broken targets array. If you don't know how to take the sum of an array, that's OK. What you can do in, instead is just loop over the array manually and count the number of broken targets. So this solution works as long as this condition eventually becomes false. So as long as Bessie eventually falls off the array, um, it works. But we still have this problem where Bessie can be stuck jumping between two jump pads, right? So she can be stuck always bouncing back and forth. And when you're in this situation, you have a couple of options. One option is to cleverly work out the cases where Bessie is going to fail. So if Bessie, uh, or, or sorry, gets stuck forever. So you, you come up with some condition that leads to Bessie being stuck forever, and you check for that condition. That's option one. Option two is a, is a little bit more um, silly, but what we can do is we can just think, OK, if the simulation has gone on for too long, then I can assume that Bessie is stuck in an infinite loop. Um, and you can sort of guess and check for what too long is. Uh, but this is sort of a, a nice solution for something like Yusuko, where you're trying to solve the problem as quickly as possible. So rather than spending a whole lot of time thinking about what leads Bessie to getting stuck, I can just create a time variable. So time is equal to zero. And whenever uh, I do another step of the simulation, I'm going to increase time by one. So I have my, uh, let's decrease the size of this so we can see the entire program. So I have my time variable. And every time I go through a loop in my simulation, I'm going to increase time by one. And then somewhat arbitrarily, I'm just going to choose a value. And I'm going to say, OK, if time is at most n, then I want to continue the simulation. If time exceeds n, then I want to stop the simulation, right? So maybe. Uh, if the, the process can't go on for longer than n steps, this sh might be sufficient. I'll just run the code and check. So right, the idea here is just if the simulation is taking too long, I'm going to stop it because I'm going to assume that Bessie is stuck in an infinite loop. So let's take our code, uh, save it, and try to run it against the test cases and see what happens. So we're going to just upload it to the grading server. And let me move that out of the way. And what we'll see is we start passing some of the test cases, but we start failing some of them as well. So we pass the vast majority of test cases, but we're failing test case 11, 12, 13, and 15. So that tells me that either there is a logic error in my code where I'm just forgetting to do something, or the time that I selected to allow the simulation to go on for wasn't long enough. And you could uh, try just increasing this variable, right? So you could do, you could multiply it by two, or you could multiply it by three, and you could just keep increasing this until you get a time that works. So if I save the, the program now, multiplying n by three, so this is saying if uh, time ever exceeds three times n, then I'm just going to assume that Bessie's stuck in an infinite loop, 
So I should end the process. So let's try to resubmit this and see what happens. And what we can see now is we should pass all of the test cases. So note that this is in some sense an unsatisfying solution because right, we didn't put in the hard work of working out um, when Bessie stuck in this infinite loop. But notice that we saved a lot of time because we didn't have to pause and think about all the cases that lead to Bessie being stuck in an infinite loop. We just said, if the process is taking too long, let's cut it short. And of course, there was some guess and check in order to sort of uh, find out the right cutoff time. But based on the fact that we knew that n was up to 100,000, we knew that this simulation couldn't last for too much longer than some constant multiple of n. Uh, so this is a, a quick and dirty way to, to solve the simulation problems when the process could go on for an infinite amount of time, is just sort of set a cap and stop simulating once you exceed that cap. So that's it for problem number two. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.